here with her talk, Drip, 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 to convert website leads to sales. Please welcome Amy Hall. Yay! <laughs> Thank you very much. So today, uh, let me give you a little bit more about me. So I have been working in WordPress for the past 10 years. I have about 7,500 hours in the back end of WordPress. And I've been working with MailChimp, not exclusively, but mostly, 98% of the time, um, for the past uh, nine years. Um, <clears throat> so here's what you're going to get today. You're going to learn what a drip campaign is which format to use for your drip campaign, there's more than one, how long your campaign should be, how many emails you're going to want to put into your campaign, and then how often you should send your emails. So drip campaigns are not exclusively e-commerce, and they can be e-commerce. So, it's no surprise to probably everyone in this room that the hardest thing about sales is getting the leads. I think it's for every industry out there, the hardest thing is getting the leads. So, who knows what a drip campaign is? No. Yay, good. All right, so it's a series of automated emails sent over a period of time. Every subscriber starts at email number one, no matter when they subscribe. So if they subscribe in Jan somebody subscribes in January, they get email number one. If somebody subscribes in August, they get email number one. And then they go through the series. And the object of a jerk campaign is to keep your name in front of the readers for that name and brand recognition. So drip campaigns are really good to educate customers about your products or industry or educate potential customers about your product or industry to confirm appointments or reservations to promote your latest product to onboard new clients, and to deliver courses. So you've probably gotten a drip campaign in the past and never even thought about it. You may have not even thought it was an automated campaign. If you go to the dentist and the dentist sends you an email reminder or a text reminder of your appointment, that's a drip campaign. And here's the real important part about drip campaigns, is that when somebody comes to your website, they're not necessarily ready to buy. They may be ready to be educated about your product, your industry, what you're selling, what you're doing, how to use your services, but they're not necessarily ready to buy. And there's a old urban legend that it takes seven touches for somebody to buy. Oh my god, somebody's taking a picture. <laughs> um, sorry. Okay. You're blushing. No. Okay. Um, so it doesn't necessarily take seven. You know, it depends on the person. But usually people need to, to have some kind of introduction to your product. It really is all about how much you know your customer's pain points and then how you can communicate your benefit and your the way you solve 
or will solve their pain points. That's what it's about, and that's what a good drip campaign does. You know their pain point, and you tell them how you're going to solve it. So there's two kinds of drip campaigns. One is a drip campaign, and one's a nurture campaign. You might think that these are the same, but they're not. Real tiny, subtle difference. A drip campaign is something that you send over time, and you just send it, and people receive it. A nurture campaign is something that you send over time, and it's based on actions that your readers take, or, or behaviors that your readers have. Um, each subscriber gets emails specifically created to walk them through the sales process. Jerk campaign may not walk them through a sales process, but our nurture campaign is specifically to walk them through the sales process. And the object of our nurture campaign is, by the end of the time they get to the nurture campaign, or by the time they get to the end of the nurture campaign, they're buying, or they've already purchased. So this is how you know how many emails to send, and this is how you know how long to make your nurture campaign. So 96% of visitors, oh wait, I went the wrong way. Sorry. So nurture campaigns, great nurture campaigns are abandoned carts, membership renewals. That's an amazing, that's an awesome nurture campaign. Um, reminders to use a software, or reminders to use a service, or reminders to use a course. Um, Re-engage with customers that aren't opening or clicking on emails with the intention to unsubscribe if need be. And pe when I say unsubscribe, people usually go, no, never. Yeah, no, unsubscribing is super good. Unsubscribe somebody every day from your list. It's a good thing. Because then you don't have dead weight on your list. Then you have a list that's vibrant and is engaged. And honestly, if you're using an email service provider like MailChimp or Constant Contact or ActiveCampaign, they look at how many emails are open, and so does Google, and they deliver your emails based on the engagement on, in your list. So if your list is really engaged, it's just like a website. If you have a website that lots of people are coming to and they're really engaged with your website, you're going to get pushed up in the search. Same thing for emails. If you have an email list that has engagement, that people are opening, they're clicking on, you're, you're going to get delivered just a little bit easier. Don't ask me how they know all of that. They just know it. So here's the beauty of nurture campaigns and jerk campaigns. It's the ability to segment. So the ability to segment emails lists and individualize email campaigns, the messaging on email campaigns, those are the two most effective personalization tactics that there are. And this is was a 2016 survey that people t that Ascend 2, two took about uh, personal experience. Personalization is all is all about it, and it's not just like putting in "Hi, Amy." That's not necessarily personalization, although it is, but it's not. Personalization is when somebody comes to your shop shopping cart, or when somebody comes to your site and puts something in the shopping cart, and then they abandon and then you send them emails about the specific things that were in their shopping cart. Or if somebody purchases something from you and you send them emails about something that's a complimentary item to what they have. You know, maybe they bought the MacBook Pro, but they need the USB-C dongle. <laughs> or just what I needed this morning. 
So you send them an upsell. So the thing about campaigns and nurture campaigns is that they give people what they want when they want it. And the thing about your guesstimating, when you create your first campaign, you're guesstimating. But you'll be able to see from your um, replies and from your opens and from your clicks, and you'll be able to narrow that down by doing the analytics in, in your email um, service provider to really know when you need to put each thing, um, send each email. You know, you'll have you'll have somebody reply to an email with a question, and you think, oh, I, I answered that question in two emails. Well, the next time you send out that campaign, you may want to shift it so that question gets answered earlier. Um, use segmentation to make it useful. This is not a broadcast. It's not the newsletter that goes to everybody. It needs to be segmented. And the more you segment, the, the more you can segment, the more you can um, hit that person's pain point because of what they've clicked in your site or because of what they clicked in the email, the prior email, the better off you are. Segmentation is all about segmentation. So personalized emails with first names or product preferences for better conversion. So you can put first names into the middle of an email. It's easy to do. And it makes it more intimate. People think that you're writing specifically to them. I have a series of like probably 70 emails that go out over my web dev process and I've sprinkled first names liberally inside of there so people think it's coming from me. It's hilarious. Because <laughs> I get emails back. Oh, and <laughs> I mean, it's, just, it's so funny because I'm like, no, it's automated. <laughs> and I tell them at the beginning, I'm going to send you an automation of all these emails. It's just <laughs> it's awesome. So transactional emails receive eight times as many opens compared to regular marketing emails. And regular marketing emails are newsletters. Transaction emails are the nurture campaign. And also, if you have an e-commerce store, here's your shipping information. Here's your receipt. And those are drip campaigns. Um, if somebody purchase, purchases from you mm -hmm. and you send them an email saying, thanks for your order. And that's a jerk campaign. Yes? I'm all looking at jerk campaigns and nurture campaigns the same thing? No. Okay. So they're all under the umbrella of jerk campaigns. Mm -hmm. And really the the distinction is that a nurture campaign is based on an action that people took and you're pushing them towards a sale. Okay. That's why a tra tra transactional email is just a drip because they just purchased. So you're, and you're gonna do the same type of emails for everyone. Everybody's gonna receive a seat, receive and a thank you. And then you might send the shipping information, when it ships. Oh, it shipped today, here's your tracking number. And you also may send them, oh, you bought, you bought this journal, here's some beautiful colored pens to make your journal more impactful. So you might have an upsell that goes in there also. Okay, that's on the other hand. I was gonna just clarify what I said. So basically, nurture campaign is something you're interested in, you're following up on kind of uh, nurturing that. And transactional is something that's purchased and you can thank you, upsell, another opportunity. Right. That, okay. And there's also other uses for transactional, but we're talking about e-commerce, so. So we're going to walk through planning a campaign. And I would, 
you have the opportunity to actually plan your campaign here and have me answer your questions. So we're going to walk through it first, and I'm going to show you something, and your brain's probably going to go. Because <laughs> most of the time, that's what I hear. Is um, so in your campaign, this is what you need to plan. How many emails will you send? Will you send? I'm assuming that you already have your subject or your topic, okay? What order are you going to send those emails? What is the time frame for those emails? What are your triggers? And what will success look like? So we're going to go back and forth a little bit here. So here is a drip campaign sequence. Notice it is very, it's very linear, super linear, right? It doesn't have any movement. It's just straight. So if you were a hairdresser, somebody books an appointment, then you're going to send them an email. This is a transactional email. You're going to send them an email that says, thanks for booking, and the time, and the date of the appointment, and the address that they need to go to. One week prior, you're going to remind them, oh, hey, you have a hair appointment, because I would forget. And you're going to send them the same information, the time, the date, the address, and a reschedule link in case something came up. That's for you, that's not for them, because if you, you can plan your workload better if, if they were schedule instead of just not showing up. One day prior, you're going to send the same thing and a reschedule link, because maybe you can get somebody in there if, if they were scheduled, but probably not if they just don't show up. The day of the appointment, you're going to send the exact same thing. Right? You want to get be in their face so they remember. And you may want to res send a reschedule link here. If you're a hairdresser, you probably it probably will work for you. If you're like a dentist or a doctor, it probably wouldn't work to send a reschedule link there, unless you have a reschedule link with a little remember appointments rescheduled 24 hours in advance. Get charged. Um, and then the, after they've completed their appointment, you're going to send them a thanks for coming and a link to book the next appointment. Because they, you know, if you're getting your haircut, you need another haircut. Unless you're like Joe, you need another haircut in six weeks, right? I still need to shave it every <laughs> few days. <laughs> and then... If they don't, if, in a couple weeks, if they don't sign up for that appointment, you send them a, 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 a reminder that they need to make an appointment. So this is a simple drip campaign, super linear. But can you see it answers all these questions? How many emails will you send? Well, we have a specific number. If I'm going too fast, let me know. You're going too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt. <laughs> In what order? So we have a logical order for all of these emails. What's your time frame? Well, we knew exactly. We did it right after they made the appointment, and then one week prior, that was our time frame. What are your triggers? Well, the first trigger was they made the appointment. The second trigger was that they fulfilled the appointment. What will success look like? Success will look like, number one, they came in for the haircut, and number two, they scheduled another appointment. Okay, so watch out for your minds. Being blown. Here's a nurture campaign. Yeah, it's like, ah, it's like, oh. All right, so most people have a free opt-in offer on their site. Not everybody, but a lot of people will have a free opt-in offer on their site, or they make a free opt-in offer on their site. So we're going to start with that. 
You have a free opt-in offer that people can download for free. Can I say free a little bit more? So the first thing, we're going to go below first. So you're going to send them an email that says, here's your free download. You also, when they fill out the form, you also want to have the thank you screen that pops up or send them to a thank you page that has a link for the free download. So if they download that, then the next step is to explain to send them an explainer video. And this is not like, you don't need to do this, but this is like the example. I'm not saying, oh, you have to make an explainer video. No, just fill in your own stuff here. <laughs> but this is a good example. So you, if they did download, then you send them an explainer video that goes into more depth than the free opt-in offer. Did they open the explainer video? No or yes. If they opened the explainer video, then you offer them a product demo or a consultation, a service consultation. And in that email, you send a link to schedule the, the consultation or the demo. If no, they didn't open the explainer video, well, then you send them an ebook to go into more, that goes into more depth. Because maybe they don't like the video format, maybe they want to read. I've only recently kind of been liking videos. So I usually read, I want to read. So you can send them an ebook that goes into more depth. And then if they open the ebook that goes into more depth, then you come back over here and offer them the product demo. If they didn't, open the ebook that goes into more depth, then we're going to take them off of the sequence. We're going to take them out of the sequence. We're just going to send them the newsletter because they're not interested and you shouldn't be wasting your time on people that are not interested at this time. doesn't mean they won't be interested in the future. Just don't waste your time on people that aren't interested right now. So if they sign up for the free opt-in offer but they did not download, you can send them a video with a high level overview of the opt-in of, of the opt-in content and another link to download. So you, the object is to get them to download here. And it's di that one's different than the, the explainer vi video. This one is super high level. So if they open the explainer video, then you send them this explainer video that goes into more depth. This one and this one are the same. So you're going to send them that explainer video that goes into more depth. And now they're in this sequence. And they follow this sequence now. If the answer is no, they did not open the video, then you kick them out. They are so not interested. Probably somebody signed them up for that without them knowing it. So this could be totally convoluted. Yes? How would you know if they open it up or not? Do you have to get their permission? No, uh, usually there's links. And you can have the links, the links tell you in the emails. There's the links. Well, I use MailChimp, but all e email service providers are going to be the same. If you click a link, it will tell you who clicked the link, and you can make the trigger for the next email that's going to send the click. And do we, we make the triggers? Do we get that information and make the trigger, or MailChimp will do that for us also? So you have to specify what the trigger is. So we tell MailChimp what to do. Exactly. If you're using MailChimp or you know, if you're using Drip or if you're using Active Campaign or Constant, please don't use Constant to contact them. <laughs> Why is that? Because it's your competitor. Archaic. <laughs> no, it's archaic. It's not. So part of the reason why I use Mailchimp is because when we first started using mobile email, Mailchimp converted every single single one of its templates to mobile email like overnight. Boom. 
like that. Constant contact took a year. They were not convinced that mobile was the way to go. And that's part of the reason why I use MailChimp is because they're forward thinking. They are always looking at how do I make things better for the people who are sending emails. So they don't want you around. <laughs> that was super bad, okay? <laughs> so when you subscribe or purchase MailChimp, I don't know what technology you use there, do they also share with you this information too? Like how do you learn how to use MailChimp? Once you, you come to me. Okay. So you do your plug in there. Um, so the MailChimp has tons and tons and tons of videos. Okay. A lot of educational videos. So they're super good. Um, but a lot of it is also written out in written form. Okay. So some people can't some people can't handle written form. So then you can go to YouTube. There are five billion MailChimp, how to do this on MailChimp, mm -hmm. on YouTube, on one of them. Okay. So you can do that. Or you can sign up for a training and learn in an hour what it takes people six months to learn. Okay. And I do MailChimp trainings along with WordPress. Okay. How much of it? The pass. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever see your discount? <laughs> so an hour is ninety-nine dollars. Well, you, go look at my site because I'm not uh, yeah, what's your site? sure. What is your site? Yeah. Amy Hold up is. Um, so an hour is ninety-nine, and I think an hour and a half is one hundred and sixty-nine, and I run them just a little bit differently. So the ninety-nine is if you really don't have any knowledge at all. And I will walk through everything, but I do the driving, and you just watch. And then I send you a recording, and you can um, watch the recording later on. And you ask questions, and you ask me, okay, I want to do X, Y, and Z, and I will show you how to do X, Y, and Z. But the 169 is, I'm like the driving instructor, and you are the driver, the student. So I will watch what you're doing on your screen, and I will tell you, click this, go here, do that. I'm very kinesthetic. If I don't do it myself, it don't work. Mm -hmm. So that one, I think it's 150, I have no idea. Um, that one is for kinesthetic people like me who have to do it themselves so they know what's going on. Yeah, I couldn't leave myself out of the mix now. All right. So let's do it. You ready? Mm -hmm. Yes. I had a, a question about the the video that you would like send because I just, I think that's a great idea if you are like a restaurant and you're hairdressing. We have a business too. Like people are confused. Like we're on the second floor. Like I realize like that's a great. So people, here's our parking lot. Yep. Here's where you go. Yep. A one minute video right. and you're this good. Is what you can expect when you walk in. That's a great. This is what our our business looks like. Everybody can put a video. Here's our entrance. Look for this. Right. And other services, because we have some other services, and I never can get people to like. I add them on my little Mailchimp thing because I use Mailchimp, but no one ever looks at it. But maybe if I did a little quick. So, yeah. I'm gonna caution you now. So you really only want one thing on an email. People have seconds. You have seconds to grab attention. So. Uh, and I make huge, long emails for people. I make hideously long emails for people, for associations and for uh, churches that have tons and tons and tons of information. Nobody gets to the bottom of those. Nobody gets to the bottom of those. The first third. And then they have burnout. And they don't want to read anymore. I have a high school that sends out five scroll email every single week and people are always complaining they don't get the information yes you did you just didn't scroll you know and people are used to scrolling it's not like we're not used to scrolling we are on mobile we are used to scrolling but the shorter the sweeter you can make your email the better off you are and sending out once a week sending out twice a week if it's pertinent to your audience if it's 
valuable if you're solving their pain points with your emails. Nothing wrong with that. If you're just chatting it up, no. No, don't just chat. So your data analysis has, has proven then that if you had five subjects thumb, by thumbnail that that fifth thumbnail is not being clicked or it's just reducing the yeah. click. So the people always want the social media links at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You know, Facebook, Twitter, you know, connect with me on Facebook, Twitter. I swear only maybe 0.5% people ever click on that. It is like, there's no reason. People want the share on Facebook, like they put their article in there and they want a button to share this article on Facebook. Zero clicks. Because it's like you're trying to get to third base on the first date on that one. <laughs> <laughs> you're asking to get married before you're even dating on that one. So, I, yeah, I try and tell people, no, no, be respectful. Well, not even like for a duration of time, like if you're just starting out your campaign, it's in one subject, but do you find that maybe after six months, adding more subjects to find out? It's going to be you know? what your audience is going to, so, and it depends on your topic. There are topics like the associations. Associations can have longer emails. High schools can have longer emails. But with the high school, um, we ended up breaking out each topic, basically. So they have a sports email that goes out that talks about all the teams and what the teams are doing. And then they have a lunch email that goes out. Like Instead of getting one email with all of that stuff, now they get five. And if they're not interested, they don't have to read it. But it what it has made it a lot easier for parents to get the information that they need for their kids. And it's made it rougher on the school because one of the ways that MailChimp does it is if you unsubscribe, you unsubscribe from the list. So we had to do some fancy maneuvering there and put and instead of an unsubscribe, we had to put an update button so they could click which items they want to view. So that's where the planning comes in to play. All right, yes sir. Does MailChimp have the capability of sending text to a phone? It seems like everyone uses They do. It's not native. It's a it's like an add-on that you put in MailChimp. The thing about MailChimp is that it's it's the most used email service provider because they give you a free account up to 22,000 email addresses, right? So there's tons of people that use it. So there's a lot of extensions, add-ons for MailChimp. You can do basically anything you want to with MailChimp except hook it up to Shopify with a MailChimp and Shopify native um, patch. Now you have to use a thing called ShopSync. Can you say that in more layman's terms? Okay. I'm actually interested in specifically that. Shopify? Well, the commerce, like I do, I use MailChimp. Uh -huh. And then I'm going to be starting up, I don't know if I'm doing Shopify or WooCommerce, but I'm wanting to know about interplay of things. So, so mail, this just happened last week. Mm -hmm. MailChimp and Shopify they used to have a native app that Shopify and MailChimp talked to each other directly. Yeah. And it was a, an app built by MailChimp. Okay. So Shopify wants to um, do some weird things with data that MailChimp does not agree with. And it's okay for Shopify to do that, but it's not okay with MailChimp's terms mm -hmm. of service for a third party to do that. Okay. So MailChimp and Shopify broke up. So they don't have a MailChimp native Shopify patch. So now there's a thing called ShopSync, which is a third party. It's not MailChimp, it's not Shopify. It's a third party patch between MailChimp and Shopify. Right. It works really well. I haven't heard anybody complain about it, so that's really good. Okay, thank you. Uh, and P.S. MailChimp just bought their own e-commerce platform called Lemonade, Lemon Drop, 
Lemon something. Mm -hmm. Lemonade, I think. I think it's lemon stand. Lemon stand. That would make sense. Oh, lemon stand. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's lemon something. Yeah, you got that point. Lemon stand. Yeah. So, there you go. All right, so, does anybody want to walk through this process with me? Yes. Okay, who? Everybody. All right, I could probably do everyone. Wait, what time is it? You have about five minutes. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I thought it was going super slow. All right, so, you have it. Let's go with you all the way in the back. No, thank you. Are you sure? <laughs> okay, so who wants to go? All right, go ahead. Let's walk through this plot, this process for you. Okay, so plan a campaign. On how many emails will you send? So basically, if I'm just getting into Mailchimp, I guess thousand. No, okay. So that's a that's a different. So we're looking at a, a specific nurture or drip sequence. So we're not looking at over the life of the Mailchimp. We're looking at to sell this one item. How many emails are you going to send in that sequence? So I'm going to go to somebody else. Okay. Go ahead. So I mean, I would think that it would be however many gets you to that point. With your example, it looked like what was it, seven, four to seven? So it doesn't necessarily mean that. Okay. So you have to look at how long your sales cycle is. A sales cycle for a hairdresser is much shorter than a sales cycle for a real estate. Mm -hmm. um, Sales agent so broker for product or service. Yes, and it's always going to be different for product or service too. It for it again. Right, I have a real estate agent that we did. Uh, it's actually a drip campaign. It's not a nurture campaign, but we did two drip, three drips. One drip goes to everybody who is going to purchase. One drip goes to everybody who wants to sell, and one drip goes to everyone. So the first drip that goes to people that want to sell. It's over one year, and he's been a broker for like 100,000 years, so he knows exactly what everybody needs to answer at the time that they need it answered. So he does what, is, um, what to look for in the house, what to expect when you get an inspection, uh, what is title, what is escrow, how do you get a lender, you know, what to look for to get the right lender. So he sends that kind of email over a whole year. And he does it on the, that was the seller side, right? He does it on the buyer side also. Okay, this is what you can expect when you're buying a house, or, and here's what you can expect when selling a house. He does basically the same thing. It's, he goes through inspection, he goes through escrow, he goes through title, he goes through for a seller, he goes through um, staging, he goes through curb appearance, like he does everything that a seller needs to know to sell their house, that's what he goes through. And this campaign goes over a year. And then his other drip is a, a holiday card. So every month except for, yeah, every month <laughs> except for August, he sends them, oh, happy August. St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. What's Even wrong with you're August? A boy. There's no holidays in August. Uh, we'll make one up. Yeah, right. <laughs> Are you recommending like just a paragraph in terms of content, like a paragraph worth, or like a whole? So his holiday card is just an image, which you have to watch out for images because not everybody turns on images. So make sure you use your alt text tags. But his buyer and seller, they're like five scrolls. But these get read from top to bottom because he's addressing their pain points specifically. Um, I have a, I guess it's a drip campaign, so I just wanted to, can I ask if I'm doing it correctly? So I, what I, I have a, a blog for women who are going gray. And so when they sign up on my landing page to get this free download I have, then they get a sequence of three emails. So the first email is like a welcome email to my site, and it just tells them a little bit about why I did this. and then. Uh, the next day they get an email with like the top five posts that might be helpful to them. And that's because my, my main success or, or goal for this was to get more traffic. And then the third email is just like, if you have any questions, you know, here's how to reach me. And so far the opening oh. rate is like 75%. So oh, freaking wow. awesome. Yeah. So that's like, good. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. So are you selling anything from this? 
No, I, that's why I need to figure See, out what that's, <laughs> how to monetize. Yeah, yeah, that's always the, yeah, yes. <laughs> Monet so monetization. Is it your post? Or yeah, all mine. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So Very nice. nice. <laughs> and what's your clip through rate on the second one? It's really high. Um, I can't remember, though. It's, it's Double digits? Yes. Oh, I, I'm curious about this because I, I have no idea, like, I wouldn't know that that was good. I, I was about to look online and see what the heck I'm getting because I don't even know. Like, 75% is good? Uh, it's good. That's so, phenomenal. So, okay. <laughs> uh, so off the chart. just like base level, yeah, 75% okay. is awesome. Okay. And it depends. It depends on your industry. Okay. So for retail, the industry open rate is like 7% because people get barraged with the retail. So you don't have to be, like, defeated. Right. Okay. So the one thing, you can Google industry email open rate for your industry. And you want to look at that. And so you don't get defeated by not having a 50% open rate. Because people who get defeated by having a 50% open rate, I just want to slap them. I, I have no idea. I would think I was, yeah. No. Maybe it tells you meal trends what the industry standard is. So yeah, it will yeah. if you're using okay. mail trends. I'm trying not to make it mail trends. So as an example, um, I work at a college. Their uh, fundraising office has an open rate of about 17 to 25 percent, and that's really asking for, that. for money. Yeah, and that's no one wants to give money. Really good. So if you're if you're anywhere around that or higher, I would say that's pretty good. Imagine if one in four people opened your email. That's 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 actually pretty substantial. Yeah, you and know? you can always send out your email again to the people who do not open. Just don't get spammy. Yeah. 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 Well, they didn't open it. That's true. They didn't notice. All right. <laughs> they don't know they're getting spammed. Yeah. So automated email messages. Average a seventy point five percent higher open rates and a hundred and fifty two percent higher click through rates than business as usual marketing. And that business as usual are as like newsletters. So new newsletters always suck. Amy, we're going to have to wrap up. I'm sorry. Oh.